Hello and welcome to a Factorio base tour again. I'm Exterminator and I'm happy to have you joining me today. And this one is one I am particularly excited about that I have been kind of, uh, not necessarily holding off on, but has been in my queue for a while and we're finally getting around to it. This is uh, a, a kind of different uh, type of mega base from Dave McW. Now, this is one that was actually featured in quite uh, uh, Ultimate Friday Facts quite a long time ago, the uh, community-driven Friday Facts. Uh, this, I believe, is from the uh, 13th issue of it. And uh, so this was not submitted directly to me by Dave McW. This was just discussed in that Alternate Friday Facts, and then the save was shared there. Um, if you want just like super, super, super in-depth info about everything, um, definitely check out that post because uh, they go really deep into it there. But what makes this factory different? Uh, well, this is a mega base, but instead of your normal X amount of science per minute or X rockets per minute, this was actually originally built way, way back in the earlier versions. Um, I believe 0 0.12 uh, is, is when this was originally built. Uh, built and the goal uh, it may have actually I think it was before 0 12 actually um, so pre 0 12 rather and uh, instead of having to launch a rocket back then the actual end goal of the game was creating a rocket defense which is this uh, object here and this was a pretty basic it was really just a placeholder uh, it, it didn't do anything <laughs> you, you just built it and then placed it and then you basically won the game uh, so that was the objective. So that's why this this is the goal of this mega base because it was made back when that was the goal, and it's been brought forward into 1.0. Uh, it uses one mod and one mod only, and that is the one that actually adds this back into the game, so you can make it and continue the factory running. Everything else is vanilla. This was built in vanilla. Um, I think. Well, maybe it, maybe the mod also adds alien artifacts um, to to get alien artifacts from somewhere uh, they used to drop when you kill biter bases that's changed obviously it's no longer a thing that's been added back in because those are required as well now <laughs> interestingly enough um they were required for modules um so this mod basically just changes it so that it's possible to make this um and, and to have the base run as it were uh but there was no cheating no, no cheat mode no spawning stuff in this was vanilla and if we take a look out Here's the actual base, uh, but the real thing, the, the real uh, kind of awesome part of this base is the rail network. If you can see how zoomed out we are, almost to the point where we can't very well see things, look at this rail network. This is pretty ridiculous, uh, and, and it's a fairly different kind of rail network than we maybe are used to seeing now in a lot of bases. Uh, it, it, it's very, um, the word I'm looking for, and not necessarily symmetrical, but you know, it's it's more uniform almost than what we're used to. You know, it has a very straightforward, uh, you know, line going uh, north, south, east, and west, and then stackers, even amount of stackers on every side coming in, and then all these lines branching off of just this main one via T junctions. Uh, and we'll take a closer look at these, but these rails are actually uh, pretty different. That they're extremely close together. They're in fact smacked right next up against each other. Uh, very basic signaling. Uh, that's not bad. Everything does work. Dave McW definitely knows what he's doing. He <laughs> he is extremely experienced in Factorio. Made some pretty amazing stuff. Uh, he made the Durad Sandstorm uh, video, if you've seen that. He did the, like, 9x13 micro factory thing. Um, multiple of those, in fact. I think maybe an 8x13. I'm not sure. Uh, but, yeah, we have all these patches uh, that are being mined via belt and uh, trained in, and there, he's using very small trains here. Uh, just one, two trains, single-headed, and there's there's turnarounds here. <laughs> this was actually more common uh, back then, I think, than it is now, uh, that, you know, you, you had the single-headed trains, obviously single-headed trains are common now, but that on the actual main lines, there were these turnarounds, uh, as you can see here, that uh, <laughs> required it to go um, the other direction, you know, to, to have it go the other direction. So. This is really interesting. Now let's take a look at the base first and kind of discuss uh, what exactly this rocket defense requires. Uh, so this is a uh, this is a very different recipe than the rocket. Uh, this the the main uh, thing consumed in this is modules. So this required fifty speed module threes, 
and 50 productivity module threes, as well as 100 rockets, 100 processing units, and 150 advanced circuits. And this base makes one rocket defense per minute is the uh, the goal of this base. So one of these per minute, which is fairly that's a that's a pretty large goal. Uh, in in the alternate Friday facts post, um, they discuss it. It almost equates to about two and a half thousand science per minute. All in all, at least in regards to the circuits, because that's the main component that is used here. Uh, but you know the fact that it requires fifty of each of those two modules and it's making one per minute. That is nearly not quite, but nearly a module per second. Module three, again to clarify, module three per second that is required for this. To be made one a minute in addition to the other circuits and the rockets of course so the main thing being produced in this base is circuits and modules uh you know the circuits for the modules primarily so you can see on the left here we have our speed three modules and then on the right we have our productivity three modules and uh, he was using efficiency modules here now i personally don't really use efficiency modules but this was again remember this was a long time ago this was way before nuclear uh, he chose to go solar, uh, probably for performance reasons, uh, instead of steam, even as it was, <laughs> fun fact, even as it was, uh, back when this base was first completed, uh, back previous zero twelve, 12, um, it ran at like between two to six UPS and FPS. C can you <laughs> just picture that for me? You know, I've, I've toured bases before where I've been at 30 UPS or, you know, 45 UPS. Maybe there's one where I was at like 25, but two to six ups is ridiculously slow and that's because the game was so much less optimized back then and this also is a great showcase to show how far the devs have brought the game and how optimized they've made it, it went from single digit ups fps numbers back then and we are now in the latest experimental uh in fact 1.1.x whatever that is whatever subversion it is and we are running at 60 ups not only that it is a very easy 60 UPS. If I pull up my updates here with my debug menu, uh, F5, you can see I'm hovering between 5.8 to maybe 6.5 update. Uh, I will not even begin to drop below 60 UPS until I get to about 15 to 16 update. Uh, 15 is kind of right on the edge there where it might start to drop. But I have so much wiggle room here. And this shows, now, now I am on a decent computer, but still, you could be on a much less good computer and this would still run at 60 UPS like you you could definitely down be a much downgraded computer and uh, this would still run at 60 UPS and that just shows how much the devs have optimized the game <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous in fact um, so if we take a look here uh, just continuing this is I mean this is pretty impressive this is very impressive in, in multiple ways uh, so we have all the models being made here uh, a lot of them. So there's level three machines, and there are a good number of them here. It looks like he's very, you know, simply arranged them. Just uh, module twos, module threes, uh, module ones are down here. Uh, but if we take a look here, I'm just going to take a quick copy. See how many are here. So we have 40 machines, and then the same, of course, on the productivity side. Uh, and then it's very much a mirrored type of build here, at least in most cases. And uh, using the efficiency modules, again, because he's on solar uh, to try to, you know, reduce power and pollution, uh, biters are on. And I would imagine on aggressive, seeing as we have these massive border walls here, <laughs> pretty crazy. Um, now, beacons were utilized. Uh, beacons have been around for quite some time. Uh, so they were utilized here. Uh, looks like a pretty standard eight beacon setup-ish, not maybe quite. Uh, but uh, pretty straightforward builds as well. Um, you know, using maybe a little interesting belt te techniques, uh, nothing super, super crazy here uh, to weave things uh, in and out. Uh, belting, now here is a good example of belt weaving. Uh, this is a, a very good example of how, how good belt weaving can be. So uh, he utilized red belt and blue belt uh, to be able to send transport belts in the same plane uh, here in the same line uh, because they will not interact. So just if you didn't know the different types of underground belts will not interact with each other of a, like a different level. So the red ones don't like connect to the blue ones and then vice versa and yellow wouldn't connect to either of these two. 
Um, so you can have multiple things happening in the same line here if you're using different level belt underground belts. Um, and that's used very effectively here. Of course, green circuits, uh, green circuits did have, uh, or did and do, sorry, have a very close to one-to-one -one ratio of cable to uh, circuits when it's moduled. Uh, if it's not moduled, we know that that's not the case. Uh, it's three to two, but and when it is productivity moduled and beaconed, it is very close to one-to-one. -one. Uh, and <laughs> uh, you can see that uh, he utilized some cars here for transporting the circuits as well as some coal, I think maybe just to block out because you can't actually block out an inventory, unfortunately, of vehicles. Um, to transfer the circuits here. And then uh, this is kind of an interesting <laughs> interesting way of doing this. So on some of these, you can just fast inserters to send uh, into here. And then from this one, uh, for the spacing needed, I think, I believe for the beacons to work, uh, using double rows, two rows of long-handed for this, <laughs> which I quite like, very creative there. Uh, all this is belt based. Uh, there are some bots here. I mean, there's actually a, there's a lot of bots, um, but it seems like all the production is pretty much primarily uh, belt based. Uh, very standard smelting here. Uh, you know, none of this has really changed that much, so nothing super new here. Uh, the the main interesting, you know, the well, the whole thing's interesting, but the main uh, really fascinating part, I would say, is the the rail network as well as uh, just making one of these a minute. I personally find it fascinating because I played right, like when I started playing Factorio, this was still a thing. I think I started in 08. Um, this was a thing and I remember making it. I remember how hard, when I first started, my first base where I beat the game, it was very difficult for me to make this. Um, I have very vivid and fond and somewhat frustrating memories of that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, now to see this in a mega base form, making one a minute is just super satisfying, nostalgic to me. Um, I really, really like this. Uh, very well done. Um, very interesting to see this as well. And just to confirm, uh, if we look at like the last hour graph here, you can see this is one a minute. So just confirm that that is maybe even slightly more 61 in the last hour. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is this is a lot of consumption, uh, you know, or production consuming and producing uh, over 4 million circuits in the last hour, uh, you know, doing about 73k circuits a minute. And again, keep in mind, when this was built way back pre-012, this is this was insane. This was, like, unheard of. Uh, and this is why this base was so, like, renowned and even potentially still is because, you know, when, when Dave posted this and shared this uh, back then many years ago, this was like a whole new, this was groundbreaking. Uh, you know, myself and Colonel Will and other mega basers, uh, I remember were really quite impressed by this because this was, you know, way back then, that was, this is, this was a lot. This was a ton of production. It's still not, it's not like a drop in the bucket now by any means. I mean, this is still fairly impressive, I think, for most people. Um, in terms of mega bases, like in terms of scale of mega base, this isn't that huge. But for back then, it was ridiculous. Um, and if we look at the all-time graph, 30 million green circuits, again, not like insane uh, compared to some of the bases we've seen now. But again, back then, that was just like unheard of. Um, so definitely tens of millions there. And uh, if we move over, and I, I really want to look at, well, we have a bit of a mall here with some labs. Um, all the research pretty much is done. Um and also keep in mind, uh, it's, it's easy to forget, guys. It's easy to forget what was in the game and what wasn't. I, I do forget. I'm still forgetting stuff, like what wasn't in the game then that's in there now. Uh, you know, you have to remember that uh, there was no infinite research. There, there was no mining productivity, period. That's actually fairly new in the grand scheme of factorial development. Mining productivity and infinite research is actually somewhat recent in the grand scheme of things. Um, there was none of that. And I feel like there was maybe less bot researches. Um, don't hold me to that. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, way less quality of life things. Just less less stuff. Um, and in how, when I say less stuff, I, I mean like you know less uh, less helpful things. And no, no artillery, by the way. Um, it's like a ton of research has been done maybe to make this playable just now, like 
this is a ridiculous amount of artillery <laughs> research uh probably just to like totally clear the biters and stuff like that but um but yeah this is pretty ridiculous um and i want to look closer at this train network so everything is one two trains which uh is pretty interesting i don't question this at all again dave mcw is <laughs> you know, definitely, <laughs> definitely top tier Factorio player, uh, more experienced than me in, in several cases. And, uh, I definitely don't question his motive for doing this. Um, and this works quite well, clearly, uh, you know, they're very fast trains. There are going to be a lot of them. If we look at our train menu, there's 216 trains, uh, 288 stations. Um, and, uh, they just come in very straightforward unloading here. Uh, a little bit of a different belt unload technique um, certainly works, of course. Um, also, one thing to mention uh, before I continue on to this, because some of you who maybe are newer to the game, um, well, quote unquote newer, <laughs> even if you joined in the last couple of years, um, it, this may be unknown to you. Uh, you may question why he used fast inserters everywhere. Um, stack inserters did not exist, again. Another thing that's easy to forget or not know about, stack inserters, when this was made, did not exist. There was no such thing. Um, so the best uh, that was available was fast inserters. <laughs> there was no stack inserters whatsoever. Um, I don't know if there was even stack re like uh, inserter research. I'm pretty sure there was, um, at least. But there definitely was no stack inserters themselves. Um, so that's why it's fast inserters everywhere, because that's the best that was available. Uh, so the trains come in, uh, it's a pull through, obviously, and they come around here, this is right hand drive, uh, and it does work very smoothly. Um, you know, the, the system does seem to work very smoothly. Uh, it's very simple, uh, but that's not a bad thing at all. Uh, there, there doesn't seem to be any jams of, of any sort here, and it's extremely simple um, junctions and one interesting thing about this again that, that at least i don't see very much or really at all nowadays um is on these junctions they pull in here uh, and then of course go down to whatever outpost they're trying to get to uh and instead of having like a normal t-junction like you know my rails at least and a lot that i've seen when you would build a t-junction then there would be you know when it would come back up this way to go back to the base this would be able to hop on to uh, you know, the line that goes back to the base, but that is not the case here. Um, it actually hops back on to the outbound lane, and that's why there's these turnarounds at the end of the line, because for these trains to actually be able to get back to the base, um, they pull out and they go all the, they continue down farther away down the line and then turn around here, um, which I find interesting. I don't really imagine this, this is optimal. I think it maybe was a limitation back then, or he just chose to do this again. Uh, I don't recall everything that was or wasn't available back then. Um, I mean, it works, so don't get me wrong. It's not like it doesn't work, uh, but having the trains travel this extra distance seems like that could be avoided. Uh, but it, but on the other hand, having uh, this simplistic of a system also makes it just run smoothly. <laughs> you know, it's very simple signaling, very simple junctions, and everything seems to run pretty dang good uh, by the looks of it. Uh, and then, Another interesting thing about this rail system uh, is, you know, a lot of systems I see are the way at least I build rail systems and that the people I play with have built rail systems is we would have a main line and then we would kind of just veer off every so often to kind of wherever we saw an ore patch. So, we, you know, let's just say this was our main line here. You know, I would maybe throw a T-junction over here, boom, hit this patch. Go farther down, throw a T-junction, boom, hit this patch. Etc. And it would be, you know, it'd be almost a little, it'd be more uh, web-like, I suppose. Uh, maybe not quite the right term, but this one is very, um, maybe fixed. Like, you know, he just has these lines, and instead of just hitting one ore patch, he continues them down. These are almost like sub-main lines, you know, or they're just split-offs, continuations of the main lines in the other cardinal directions. Um, and hits multiple ore patches down here. I'm not quite sure what his determining factor was for how far down he went. We do notice that it actually goes farther down the farther out you go. I imagine that was for ore richness. Um, and then, although this one then is 
very short. Uh, and these kind of veer off. It's, it's actually a very interesting pattern, how they kind of meet up like this. Um, but these do seem very vanilla. I don't think any of these respond or anything. This is just kind of how it worked. Um, it did go out every direction. And uh, this is just something I never really see. Like, I, at least nowadays, I basically never see a rail system built in this fashion. Um, so it's quite interesting to see that. Uh, also, what's very interesting to me is uh, not tapping the entire ore patch. I know why. It's pretty straightforward why. Uh, because these are very small trains, right? So, like this patch, for example, you only need enough mining to fill two cargo wagons. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you don't need, you don't need to put... Uh, miners and belts on this whole patch. It was for optimization reasons, because again, back then, uh, I don't think miners slept uh, when they were not mining. I'm actually not sure if they do now. Um, I'm pretty sure the devs have optimized the miners in some way, at least, to where when they're not actively mining, they take very little or like no performance. That was not the case way back then. So the less miners you had, the better. Same with belt. Belt was just like way, way many magnitudes less optimized back then than it is now. Um, belts were really actually quite bad for, for, for performance, I recall. Um, so minimizing the amount of belts on here obviously was very advantageous. So not ha tapping the whole ore patch, um, again, something I never really see nowadays, at least, at least what I look, look at. Um, but that's because it's not really needed. Uh, but back then it was. So it's just cool to see the differences, uh, you know, how design has advanced or changed, uh, you know, with how the game changed and, and with time. Uh, so that's a rail network. It's very, um, you know, very similar in every direction. It's uh, copper, iron, coal, uh, unload. There's, there's no stone. Uh, we, you know, I didn't need stone for this. It was very simple, very straightforward for this. Um, and then same up here, of course, on that side and on that side. Um, now we did have some oil. It looks like uh, it's potentially all pipe question mark I, this is running <laughs> okay the pipes are running up here uh, and ties into there very interesting so uh, if we look here I mean the oil was somewhere over here uh, so here's plastic um, being made and then I'm actually trying to find the oil let's we, we can follow these petroleum lines <laughs> I saw it before and uh, and now I, I can't quite Located again. I thought it was over here somewhere. Um, so this comes from down here, which comes from over this way, over this way. So these run up here. Oh dear. Oil oh, was very far away. Okay, here we go. Uh, again, pretty standard beacon model setup for the oil. Um, nothing super mind boggling here, but it certainly works without any problems. Um, having coal and stuff on here. Coal, again, for the explosives, you need all the rockets. Uh, it is also interesting to see how the recipes change. Again, the fact that, um, you know, I mean, these recipes obviously didn't change, but, um, or perhaps they did. I know the red circuit ratio changed, so maybe the mod changed the back, or they had to do some modifications to, because the red circuit, the copper to cable, or sorry, <laughs> the cable to red circuit ratio um, has changed multiple times since this was made, I think. So... Uh, that definitely had to have some changes, or maybe the mod reverts it to back what it was, is what I would imagine. Um, but uh, looking at the modules, I actually had completely forgotten that Module 3 is required alien artifacts. Um, I actually quite like that, um, giving more of a reason to use them. They were also used to make purple science way back then for research. Um, I forgot that they were used in this, so that's pretty neat. Um, and, you know, we're just, we have quite a few of these. We have 277. Uh, now, there's a lot of playtime on this map. There's, uh, if we do time, there's 10 days, 7 hours. Uh, if we don't want to do the math, that's 247 hours, 8 minutes, and 20 seconds. Um, and obviously, if this makes one a minute, we should have far more than this. I'm not sure if some were lost or they just emptied them out. Um, it doesn't look like he placed them anywhere, like vast fields of <laughs> rocket defenses. Um, but, uh, I mean, that would probably be really bad for UPS. Um, but we are making them. And then uh, solar, pretty standard solar layouts. I mean, every solar, well, not every, but a lot of solar layouts are different. A lot of people, you know, most people use different than other people. Um, but I would assume the ratio is the correct ratio. If we did the math, I'm sure that would work out. I think it's like 0.85 or 
it's 0.83. It's 0.8 something in there. I never remember the exact number um, of um, accumulators to like solar panels. Um, and uh, and yeah, so using all solar again, steam very inefficient back then. Nuclear didn't even exist; wasn't even an option. So that's what had to be used. And then of course, then it makes sense to be using the efficiency modules here. And uh, I think that mostly covers it. I just thought it would be really interesting to take a look at this base. I found it fascinating in the alternate Friday facts, and I wanted to take a look at it in person. And just seeing how things kind of advanced through time and the design philosophies and stuff, um, really quite interesting. Uh, very impressive base, extremely impressive base. This, <laughs> again, back, I mean, even now, this is really quite impressive. But back then, it was just staggering, absolutely staggering. Um, and it, I would imagine these are laser turrets. Yes, 23,000 laser turrets. So that's a lot of power. <laughs> um, the base uses 6.6.5-ish gigawatts. It has capacity for 8.7. I'm sure that that is very much maxed out when the lasers are firing. Um, if we take a look at pollution, it's um, massive. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, the I think we maybe lose sense of scale here the sheer size of the area that's been walled in and like kind of controlled here um is pretty ridiculous like you know if you just look at the size of these patches and the size of this base like if we look at the size of this base right and then compare it to the size of the whole you know you could fit i don't know one two, you could probably fit what like six seven of these maybe five or six of these each direction it like long and you know tall and stuff like that it's it's a very uh very large area it's been taken over here um which makes sense you know because then you can easily expand and get your ore patches are being attacked here so um i'm curious what this is uh very curious what that is this yellow here um, unfortunately, we can't can't really see down there. Um, I wonder. Let, let me see really quick. I just want to. I'm really curious. I didn't really notice it the first time, and I, I think we're almost done here. But I'm gonna go into the editor mode and zip out here because I am quite curious. What uh? Okay, belt. Yes. <laughs> also, the laser turrets are very oddly placed again because lasers used to be a different size. Um, so when the update came that changed their size and graphic and stuff, um, it makes them very wonky. Uh, of course, now it's really quite good if you leave it like this because you can fit way more <laughs> in the same space because they're basically overlapping. Um, but uh, yeah, they use belt uh, because, you know, this is actually fairly standard. Is that It would push the biters away or spitters. When this was made, I'm not even sure spitters were a thing. I don't think so. I don't remember exactly when spitters were added. Um, they've not been in the game the whole time, though. So uh, this was pretty effective. And we can kind of see um, all this is frozen here. But I think that's just that's just how it works. Um, but yeah, pretty awesome, honestly. Um, well, everything's frozen because I'm in the editor mode. Duh. <laughs> Actually, I don't want to go out of it here because we'll put my character there. But there we go. I think that's going to do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this base tour. Um, Dave McW's one rocket defense per minute base. Very impressive. I'm very happy to be able to tour it. And, uh, you know, that Dave shared it so long ago. And it really, I think, was an inspiration to so many mega basers and, uh, and kind of what started a lot of mega basing, honestly. There was some before that, but again, not really to this scale or, or this, uh, you know, method or design. So very, very cool. I'd be interested to hear what you guys think down below. And, uh, you know, let me know. I'd be interested when some of you guys started playing. Like, you know, do you remember this? When when you were playing, when you first started, was this a thing? Or is some of this totally new to you? <laughs> I, I personally uh, actually had forgot that uh, stack inserters didn't exist. It took me a minute to be like, why was he only using fast inserters? And then I remembered. Um, it's just crazy to think how much has been added since then. Um, and again, remember, there was no mining productivity, anything like that. So what you had for your for your mines is what you what you had what you got, <laughs> you know, unless you put productivity modules in the miners. Um, and, and yeah, just 
crazy to see, awesome to see. Anyway, if you did enjoy, a like is much appreciated. If you're new, feel free to subscribe to keep up with all future content. And I would love to hear your thoughts down below, guys. Uh, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.